that's a huge deal for DeFi right now. So, right. you know, I, I, I find coins like that, but in the bear market, I'm looking for really long-term coins that are, you know, going to help with the next financial system. Hey guys, welcome to part two of my conversation and interview with Darren, Darren Moore, Mr. XRP Darren. Um, if you haven't watched part one, I encourage you to go watch that first and come back. But in the second half of the interview, we get into some pretty juicy and exciting topics, which I'm sure a lot of you will be able to gain a lot from as well. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the other side. Enjoy. Now, do you find yourself do you find that we're in a bear market or a bull yeah i'm leaning more towards bull i i, right. I see why the bears are saying what they're saying and right i've prepared just in case something like that were to happen i would right. have something to show for for this and you know i i, I know that i'm not I'm not going to know exactly what happens with the market it's just you know you have to just incorporate all the facts that you learn and just kind of take risks and de-risks and just, you know, make, make sure that, that you can handle whatever scenario comes about, which, right. you know, I, I lean more towards the bull market. However, you know, <clears throat> the death cross was, was a bad signal. There's, um, we, we caught a lot of resistance at 50,000. So when we're kind of having like this curved look to it which that's what dropped us last time is that that yeah. rounded top now we're, we're having something similar mm -hmm. so i'm i protected myself we just broke through resistance so fifty thousand resistance so you know right. as the prices go up you get more and more optimistic but if we're still in a bull market right the bears missed from whatever we crashed to 28,000 28, all the way to 50,000. They've got to wait until it passes 64,000 before they jump back in. So that's a huge gap that they were unwilling to risk, which I, I'm confident from fundamentals too. Like I, I use fundamental analysis in with my technical analysis because we're not stopping money printing or anything like that. So the Bitcoin narrative of an inflation hedge is still there. There's a lot of... <clears throat> there's a lot of things to be optimistic about. So I kind of use that when we're in a 28,000 to, to hold on to the majority of my crypto and make sure. You right. know, and that's I'm, just specific to Bitcoin itself for the 28,000. There are other yeah. highly active, uh, obviously, as you're aware, highly active um, cryptocurrencies that performed very well during that decline. The whole market actually went to about a, I think it was um, a market cap of about one point five or 1.6 it's now back up to i think it's 2.3 last i checked 2.3 trillion right yeah. so the, yeah you're, you're absolutely right and i don't i don't buy and sell bitcoin i just kind of use it as an indicator for for exactly. what's going to happen with the overall market i'm more of a all coin person and yeah. recently i've been more of a super low market cap all coin because they they have the most volatility and if you combine that with technical analysis and you can get in close to the bottom and they have the potential for the highest gains that's it's it's of course more risk involved with it but it's more of my cup of tea and then also it's just easy for me to to gauge coins by market cap so if i find a one million dollar market cap coin i can compare that to a 50 million dollar market cap coin what does a one million market cap coin have to offer and what what's everything in the 50 million dollar market cap range and if i see you know, the $1 million market cap has a lot more to offer. It's a 50 X and it's not like XRP takes over the world reserve currency or something. It's something very simple that can happen in crypto every day, 1 million, right. 50 million. So right. it just make, it's just easier for me to invest in the smaller market cap coins. Uh, that's good. That's a good segue actually, because one of my, my few questions to ask was what would you consider a great place for somebody to start when they're doing their research and finding these either low market cap uh, uh, projects or coins and also then what's that process okay are you able to synthesize that to about four steps or what, what does that look like for you <laughs> no not not four steps but um 
I, I guess the thing is uh, I'm always on Twitter and every, everybody's shilling coins and stuff. So I'm always looking right. at coins. So you'd have to find a way for, for you just to get on CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap and just randomly pick coins, right? And just right. visit their website, visit their About Us, visit their white paper and, and just first first judge judge a book by its cover is there is their website decent is it is it like some garbage website then when you read the white paper i mean like i I don't read every sentence of the white paper i kind of skim through it to to find valuable information but uh Mm -hmm. understanding how the token works in the network right so um when i first started i didn't realize you know these networks are are just that they're crypto networks and, and the token is kind of how i i get into the network and use a network right so right. you know that that never really clicked for me until a little later on so that that's an important thing it's just finding out how the token's used and what it's going to be used for there's there's tokens that <clears throat> that aren't really used by the network and the network's really cool but but the, there's no demand for the token. So if you can find, you know, the just basic economics of supply and demand at first, and you, you believe in, you know, there's going to be a demand for that coin if, if the project's, uh, if the project's successful. And then, then also you want to look at market cap, right? If something has um, a fully diluted market cap of $10 trillion or something insane, obviously that coin's overvalued because right. you know that's it's just you know crypto in general is two trillion so that there's you know a vast amount of uh total supply and the circulating supply is small you know and there's that huge gap you kind of want to avoid stuff like that at least until that number comes down right. and it's kind of wanting uh just constantly look on coin gecko coin market cap and then join the telegram groups uh, all these projects have telegram groups you can find out a lot of information if you just be a fly on the wall and just listen to how the team handles questions of course if right. there's you know a team that's very professional and answering questions really well versus team members that are getting angry and losing their patience with a bunch of people on telegram that's a bad sign or if they're posting moon rockets or you know something insane like that obviously you want to stay away from a coin like that you kind of want like a professionalism with yeah. with any of the projects as opposed um, to a uh a mature approach to the whole uh emotional uh elements of cryptocurrencies like you just mentioned moon rockets that's probably a bad sign <laughs> yeah that's that's a horrible sign the other thing is if you're on twitter right and everybody's shilling you a coin mm-hmm. i mean if it's pumped like crazy that's something you usually want to avoid too usually people are telling you it's going to change the world as they're up 100x so those are the things i stay away from and you know i i I try not to even talk publicly about coins at 100x or anything that i don't want people to jump into something that's you know got a lot of air underneath it so you know you know be careful with with people they'll they'll get really emotional and they're not doing it to you on purpose they're just very happy that they made all these gains and they're bragging about it and you can look at that coin and say oh wow this might change the world because look the price has gone up 100x but once you jump into it it declines 50 percent or something something crazy so i'd rather find the coins that nobody's talking about that nobody nobody says anything about and try to get in early before it underaxes or something else that's excellent yeah, and I, I agree with you in that sentiment as well because, um, well, I've been a recipient of the negatives of following that hype train. And there are tons of moments, even with the great projects that have been hyped, some com- some community members within even the XRP community, for instance, tried pumping at particular times. And if you almost look at it, it almost seems like an attempt to discredit the project in some covert way, like some indirect, like... Uh, oh, let's try and associate this type of culture with this project that's actually good so that people don't take it seriously. Um, one can say the same thing for XDC because when that actually possibly got a lot of people to follow that culture of hyping or pumping the, the idea of the project. And that's actually something that drew me away from XDC myself. Me sitting here, I don't hold any XDC, but 
I should have actually taken the time to research the whole R3 and Corda network more, uh, more intently. And I did not at that time. And uh, now I'm like, oh, darn, maybe I should have actually followed that, that breadcrumb and that bread trail and, uh, and seen where it would have led me. But either way, it's important to just be highly skeptical, I'm assuming is what your sentiment is when it comes to uh, doing your research or this due diligence approach to cryptos. From people suggesting coins. And I mean, I mean, you should be skeptical when you're first looking at a coin too. Yeah, so I guess skeptical on both accounts, but really skeptical when a coin has thousand X and everybody is telling you to buy it. That's right. to me, that's a sign I don't want to buy it. Right. I mean, and that's kind of where the technical analysis really helps, right? Because it, the, a lot of times I do get uh, shilled coins, right? But uh, sometimes people are early too. And, and if I look at the chart and see, you know, that it's on the first Elliott wave or something, yeah, there, right. there's a lot of potential here. But if it's, <laughs> you know, did something like Dogecoin did or, or XCC did, I, I kind of steer away from those coins. And I, I've got nothing personal against XTC or anything. It's just, um, right. you know, I, I just am not going to buy a coin that, that has already, you know, whatever it did. It, it, yeah, a thousand X. I want to find an undervalued coin that's about to do what XTC did. Right. Absolutely. And that, that's, that's the approach that most people should actually embody when they're approaching their research, at least. Um, I remember, I recall there's a few tweets or videos that you discussed AI and um, uh, just overall certain trends within the finance, but pretty much it's almost like a general sense of where the world may be going. And what is your take on what the next, the next, uh, the next items to pay attention to within the next few years would be outside of just, you know, distributed ledger technology. What, what other items are you paying attention to on your, on your end? The, the IMF has, has announced that they're, they're, they're proposing to put a floor under the carbon credit market. Mm -hmm. So right there, I mean, if the floor is a thousand X higher than where I buy a carbon credit here, it's, you know, it's, it's a huge huge gap there so that there's definitely a push towards green energy and and carbon emissions so that that's certainly something i'm trying to look into now uh, i always like the precious metals um idea that that the whole system collapses and i have, should have an insurance policy so i'm, I'm always i always like that idea i don't i personally think you know, I'm, I'm personally an optimist for, for the future. A lot of uh, precious metal people think that, you know, it's, we're coming to an end. So I'm more of an optimist, but I'm willing to say I could be wrong. So I'm, I'm, I'm piling whatever I can up with precious metals. Um, artificial intelligence is, is certainly machine learning, artificial intelligence. So they kind of go hand in hand. The machines, uh, machine learning to take the data and clean it up while the artificial intelligence analyzes and tries to predict patterns from that. So I, I think that those are two, two large things that are going to come out. Uh, identities, right? Digital identities. That's certainly think going to be something in the future. Uh, a space uh, uh, we're, we're kind of going into like a next cold war right now. So if space explorations uh, is a big thing that the thing is with any type of stocks, so it's, there's a lot of froth there. So you have to yeah. really do your due diligence to make sure that, that you're picking, picking the right one. And right. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think the central banks will continue to inflate, but I think, you know, a black swan event's certainly possible. So I try to steer away, away from stocks, but if I see a huge market correction like we had with, with COVID, that's my entry point. I'm getting right into to, uh, find, the, find the stocks that I want to invest in or the, the green energy companies. Um, right. Yeah, uh, 5G technology, cloud computing, um, it's it would be difficult to find the investments there, right? Because uh, just with with XRP, right? I had to learn banking to to understand where where XRP fits in and what, why it's why it's a good coin, right? So it's right. there's if you find stuff that you already know about, like if you, if you're a gamer and you really like games, right? The, the metaverse is going to be huge, right? So if if you already have that knowledge, and I'm a gamer. And you can dig into some of the the projects that surround the metaverse. That that mm -hmm. could that's going to be a huge trend in the future. And if it's something of interest, then you have the passion to begin with, and you can you can easily 
dig into the facts and you I know. understand it. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Um, you're mentioning the element of uh, machine learning and AI. Um, those are definite trends that are unfolding now, but those are projects, projects around those kinds of concepts or technologies have been in, in iteration phase for a few years already. And I think cryptocurrencies will, well, cryptocurrency projects and blockchain will only improve that as time goes on. So um, either way, I, I think the, the idea is fairly, fairly, fairly solidified. We just have to be patient when in a bull market. And we also shouldn't be hesitant to act when things do correct themselves like they did during March of 2020. I'm personally waiting for that opportunity to happen again. I don't necessarily know if it will, but history shows that it always does correct. It's like markets always correct yeah. themselves. So is, is there, is there something that you'd like to impart on our audience today to at least let them know what your thought process is as to where to find you, what projects you're working on or, you know, overall, cause I, I'm going to end this off nicely for your YouTube, for the YouTubers to go to follow your channel. I believe you also have a Patreon, which, I'm guilty to say I haven't actually joined yet, but I'm looking to make that move in the near future here, but you can definitely go ahead and uh, present your community to the, to the future trend folks here. I'm uh Darimore junior. If you type in on YouTube, Darimore junior. And, um, I think if you type in YouTube slash C slash Darimore junior, that that's my page, um, right. on Patreon, I'm fame 21 more and on Twitter, I'm also fame 21 more. And I, I agree with you with with um, waiting for the right opportunity. And I think that's going to come with almost all markets, right? Even real estate, real estate had its uh, had had uh, the government kind of backstopping uh, foreclosures, right? When right. that supply of foreclosures closures hit the market, I think that's going to be the the drop in real estate. And we're kind of see we kind of saw that with commercial real estate too. COVID was. Uh, was a big, big catalyst for, for commercial real estate to, right. to lose a lot of its value. So, uh, you know, real estate's interesting because it's, it's a really inefficient market and you can, you can find really, really good deals, even, even at really high prices too. So, right. you know, there's always opportunity in real estate if you, if you do your due diligence, but I agree with you. I'm, I'm, I'm cash is king, right? If you, if you right. have a stockpile of cash with the right opportunity, you, you know, you, you can be, a winner really quick just buying the dip mm -hmm. absolutely that's great um well i i think for the time being what we can do is probably circle back with uh with new information at a later date but i really appreciate your time in speaking with us today and uh, sharing your wisdom and your knowledge um at least from a from an angle or perspective that you know most people can understand because if we went to the technicals i'm pretty sure we'd lose a lot of people <laughs> but uh, fundamental research and fundamental analysis in itself is important when doing research in any market really and uh, i think that's literally the foundation of finding the right the right um the right opportunities in any market as well so um thank you so much for being a beacon of uh of knowledge and i'd like to say uh sound sound mindedness in this space because it's really helped me um, and I continue to follow your work. I love your most recent, uh, your most recent uh, uh, Klaus Schwab and uh, Christine Lagarde uh, post that you, I think, released yesterday as well. So um, I'm going to link the appropriate uh, videos and uh, and items in the description below. And uh, for those that are listening, thanks so much. And uh, go go ahead, follow Darren's journey as he continues to be an open-minded beacon of of knowledge for everybody in crypto and pretty much at this rate in finance as well. So um, Darren, it was a pleasure and I really appreciate you joining us for the day. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure also. Thanks for having me on the show. So it was fun. Awesome. That's my conversation with Mr. Darren Moore, Mr. XRP Darren or Fame21 Moore on Twitter and Patreon. You can find those appropriate links in the description of this video. Um, but either way, as always, if you're looking to also follow up on other videos and interviews that I have coming up, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified anytime I post those videos. But as always, thanks so much for joining. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos.